Hey, welcome to Monster Party. Oh, wait, wait I mean... Yeah, Monster Party! <laughs> welcome to no, no, no. Mini Son of Monster Palooza with... Larry Strode. Larry Strode. Monster Party Podcast. Monster Party Podcast. You are one-fourth of the podcast. Yes, I do the show with Matt Weinhold, Sean Sheridan, and James Gonis. Right. We've been doing the show for seven years, and we've been doing it consistently uh, every other week. It's a bi-weekly podcast. Right. We talk about everything from science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And like you, we have a lot of great guests come on the show. Right. Uh, we had... Uh, guests like uh, Walter Koenig. We had Clint Howard just Clint recently. Howard just to that. Uh, we've had uh, uh, we had William Lustig on. We've had Denise Crosby. We have a lot of great guests that come right. on our show, and and sometimes they talk about things that isn't really common knowledge. So that's kind of cool because right. when you come on our show, it's a party. You usually have cocktails. You, and there stuff. is nothing you guys talk about that is common knowledge. <laughs> your your depth of knowledge. What I I came on your show and we yes. talked about guys in monster suits mm -hmm. and stuff. And I, I had already been listening to the podcast for a good year or more because Mark Tavares turned me on to you guys. Yes. Mark came over here one day and we were talking with this. And I said, hey, is there any other, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts. And I said, but I want to listen to more of stuff that I like, monster stuff and all that. And he goes, Monster Party, guys. Listen to Monster Party. Yeah. I was like, okay. And I started. I went backwards and listened to stuff. I, you know, and then started listening. You've been on my a couple of road trips. I went and did a film really? in Utah about a year ago. Uh -huh. And all the way out to Utah, one day trip. I think I listened to like eight episodes. I had backed up, <laughs> and that's all that was in the car where you four guys uh -huh. was going on and going on. And again, it was great, but I mean, I was so intimidated to go on the show. No, no, no. You, you guys are great. You see, the, the funny thing is, is some of the podcasts out there, you have people who are all, hey, let's talk about how much we love the thing, and we're going to talk about the thing, and I love the thing, and I love the thing too, and I love <laughs> the thing about our show. Right. We don't always agree on stuff. Right. And sometimes we've gotten into huge arguments. I've never heard that. And, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, but, and, and sometimes some feelings might be hurt. But it, for the most part, it's like we're supposed to, it's supposed to create a safe zone. You guys are a bunch of friends. I mean, it reminds me, <laughs> yeah. which is great. I mean, I'm sorry. We're, we're also here with Kathy. I have my wonderful daughter, daughter, daughter yes. Kathy. <laughs> and, Hi. Yes. And who, uh, the funny thing with Kathy is uh, I'll never forget that the day that my wife told me she's pregnant and she's gonna, we're going to have a daughter. I'm all, oh, I, I guess I can go show her princesses. And she goes, well, well, you can show her your monster stuff, too. <laughs> in fact, the first thing that we watched as a, when she was a baby in her little, in her little uh, crib was right. Creature from the Black Lagoon. And, and I had no idea. It her memory at that moment. I had no idea. One that of my she, earliest yeah. memories is sitting in my little swing and uh, seeing Creature from the Black Lagoon playing. You know, like the lights are off. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And and she's gone on to really love horror movies. And sometimes I've been kind of nervous about showing her stuff, and I try to give her all the history. At what age did you start? When did your dad, what was the first thing you remember being introduced to? I mean, not just the creature, but I mean, like, you get to watch this really horrific thing that maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> I think it was Trilogy of Terror because I my dad has a whole um like shelf of CDs and I saw like the little doll's face right there and I was like oh what's this and you were like oh that's and how old were you I don't I think you were five <laughs> I was young. yeah I had a, a, a series of DVDs and I said well honey it's it's about a, a spooky doll. Remember we I talked. I wanted to watch it. And, she, <laughs> and so what I did is, and and we had, I'd shown you clips of classic King Kong too, mm -hmm. and we kind of talked through it as King Kong was fighting. I go and I would say, oh, and there's Faye. I would always say, I wouldn't say <laughs> Anne I would say right. Faye. And the you know King Kong would have, you know fight, and he says, oh, but he really likes Faye. And, but as we started to move on, she wanted to see this. I was really nervous, but <laughs> believe it or not, Ted, we sat together, we watched it, and she watched the whole thing, and she wanted to watch it again. That's great. <laughs> yeah, but a, uh, a true born fan. Yeah, yeah but the big, the, I think the big thing was so after Trilogy of Terror, we we moved on to other things, but I was holding off for the big one, which to, for our viewers. The Exorcist, hello. Many people consider The Exorcist to be one of the most frightening films of all time. I mean, people can argue... Larry is raising his daughter right. Yes! Yes! And it's funny you should say that because I've had people say that exact same thing. But... With The Exorcist, I was really nervous. Because right. I remember sure. I was, uh, she wanted to see it, I don't know, like 13? Yeah. And, and, because I... Let me see it. How old were you? My daughter's right over here. How old were you when you first saw that? Oh, God. You probably were on the same age. Yeah, maybe a little younger, yeah. but... 
I'm, yes. I was 12, 13. Okay, yeah. but this is what I did, because I, I want to be that good parent. I was the parent that said, okay, well, honey, at first I, I checked with mommy, and, and mommy, uh, and it's funny, I said, I said, honey, what, what do you think? And she goes, I think she'd love it. <laughs> so, well, well, then you married the perfect woman, yes, too. <laughs> well, what we did is we went through the history. I explained the history. It just made me want to watch it even more. Yeah, so what, what was going on in that 73, 74 time period, right. um, the, the people, how everyone came together, the history of the film, how people reacted. and You, re, you recall uh, seeing stuff when people talked about Frankenstein from 1931, right. they said, when I first saw the monster, oh my gosh, I fainted. And fainted yeah. So The Exorcist, you know, it's the kind of same type of thing. Right. If There's a plenty of documentaries, I think, on YouTube that you can go and see uh, people reacting from The Exorcist, and they were like horrified. People yeah. were passing out and stuff. So I, I wanted to make sure that, that Kathy didn't freak out. Or so, so we have our popcorn, we get the lights out, we watch the film. At the end of the film, what did you say? I just, I, I loved it. Yeah, that's, she goes, I loved it. And I, was pet, I, I saw it, I know I had my driver's license, I was 16, I think I just got my driver's license, and they were replaying it, because when did they come here? What year was Exorcist? I said, uh, 73, 74. Is, okay, so I mean, so this is a ways after yeah. that, when I get my driver's, and we go to the local theater, and they just got a new Dolby surround, yes. all this kind of stuff, and I remember looking, you know, almost like Mystery Science Theater, you can see the chairs, you see the heads, and as the film went on, heads just started slinking further and further. I was petrified. I got home that night, and I was. Like, but I've I've heard from more and more people. I was I was raised Catholic in the Catholic Church. Okay. Yes. So a lot of friends of mine that were raised Jewish uh -huh. were like, "It's a good film." Yes. I didn't think it was that scary. Yeah. I was like, I was raised in Catholic Church. Yeah. I was there with like, scary God stuff yes. and the crucifix. And being an altar boy. Well, I'll, I'll, like, I'll go a step further. See, like you, okay, I, I too was raised Catholic, and I did the whole altar boy thing and stuff. But when the film came out, I was too young to see it. Right. Now, if people remember, The Exorcist has this beautiful little music. Do, 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 do. Tubular bells, right? Right. Okay. Well, that song was played on the radio. Right. At night, my because I shared my room with uh, three other brothers, uh, two that were older, one that was younger, okay. and my oldest brother had to have the radio on as we went to bed. But when that song <laughs> came on, he flipped out and had to turn it off. And I go, I go, well, why, why are you turning that music off? It, it's it's such a pretty sound. He goes, oh no, oh don't talk about that song. That's a bad song. <laughs> so it was like tubular bells from The Exorcist. Yeah, it was it was uh, well, a pretty powerful. It's that association with music and film. Yeah, you know, where you're hearing one thing, you haven't seen the image, so it's mm -hmm. just like sounds like Christmas music. Mm -hmm. So speaking of The yeah. Exorcist, though. What do you have that might be one of your okay. prized possessions? We, we, we were asking everybody. Obviously, people are bringing show and tell. Oh, we brought stuff. They brought so stuff. <laughs> <laughs> here, hold it. Guest camera. Yes, camera here. Oh, oh big camera. Yeah. Big camera. There you go. Uh, this is my living dead doll of Reagan. Yeah. And um, she was actually signed by the Linda Blair. Yeah, Linda Blair. Blair. Excellent. On her leg. <laughs> Very <And> cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I just have her on my shelf and. She's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of another daughter. Mine right over here. <laughs> Do you have an exorcist doll too? I no. Know, but but I, she likes macabre. I sort think of. I was in like seventh grade and the only kid that dressed up for Halloween at school and I came as the exorcist. Oh, oh she, so she was cool. ragging. She no did, way. We did the we latex did the rubber body. vomit. Oh my oh, god. Oh, yeah. See that's <laughs> we still have the dress if you want it. <laughs> oh, we'll, oh, we'll have we have. He's got prosthetics. Yeah. There you go. It's funny you're, because you're when we go to Monster Palooza, one of the things that we miss so much yeah. is when you walk around Monster Palooza and you see all these people wearing fantastic costumes, amazing makeup. My daughter and I, we were walking around and we saw these two kids. One was dressed up as one was a. Baby Pennywise. Yeah, Pennywise. And the other one was this older girl who was dressed up as Reagan. And so she, we we asked to take a picture, and she was like, "Oh yeah, sure." And she like did a back. A she back turned back. around and did the back flip. So and we got a picture of Kathy's there going, "Huh," and the girl, ah, <laughs> which I think is so cool. That's great. That's so neat. That's great. So we know how you got introduced to monsters and creatures it's this man right here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in we started so for you i mean was this just another thing like straight out of the womb and the very like well the very first 
uh, when I talk to my older brothers, I say, you know, I got beat up a lot, and they were very mean to me. I'm like, oh, you're so mean! And monsters to me, it always seemed like in monster films, monsters were always getting beat up. Or always, right. you know, uh, the one film that I remember distinctly seeing, uh, and, and I, I walked by the family room, and my older brothers had it on, and they turned around and they go, no, no, you can't watch this! And it was a scene from The Black Scorpion. Okay. It was that, a stop-motion animation film with uh, Will O'Brien doing a lot of the special right. effects, and I think Pete Peterson. Okay. And there was the scene, the scene that I saw was when the black scorpion is actually taking its dagger tail and sticking in the guy on the telephone pole right. wires. And I'm all, oh, what is that? What is that? And what, how old are you at this time? Oh, I was five. Okay. I, I was five. And that, and from that moment, I, I had to find out about these monsters. And I was able to see Frankenstein. Right. It was on Saturday nights sure. on Always Creature Saturday Features. Days, yeah. But the thing that got me is, you know, you're looking through the pa uh, pages of the TV guy trying to find any kind of monster film. But the thing that really did it for me I has to be. Larry Brown, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a table out. I here. did I did well just for because why not? Well, for many of what for many of the people out there who are watching. Like for for many of you out there, you probably like me, you grew up on famous monsters. Right. Now, uh, when I show this to people, some people go, oh, you started then. This is issue 110. It says September 74, but they always came out a few months earlier. So when this magazine came out, oh my gosh, it was... Look it at the was, way he holds it. It was like magic. He's, and Well, the funny, thing, <laughs> the funny thing about it is this one that I'm holding in my hand right now is my nice copy. The very first one, which I still have, yeah. is beat up because I paged oh, through yeah. it like crazy, you know. And one of the most awesome things that they had is, it, not only did it have pictures of monsters, but it also had this back area with Captain Company where you could get monster masks right. and monster toys. And I'm like, oh, this is the greatest thing <laughs> ever! And so, like, my daughter can't relate. She... She has she has DVDs to watch, you yeah. know, and, and we didn't have that. Well, they they we just don't. Up. They don't have the magazines anymore, really. No, they're, they're no. Kinda, well, it's, not not this way. No, no. But because what was the famous too? The, the the send away for the uh, the full the life size Frankenstein. <gasps> who right? who out there fell for that? I Ted. I I, I saw that I in the comic book. So, honey, uh, in comic books and back in comic books, there would be advertisement advertisements for like funky products and one was life-size monster for one dollar and when you look at it you think it's oh my gosh you think it's something like this a three-dimensional monster right. no. that you can actually yeah oh, it only costs a dollar and i remember yeah. writing my letter and putting the dollar oh it took me forever to get that dollar but i <laughs> i wrote that letter and i put here is my one dollar for the monster and i wrote in big letters right. colored it in red pen right. you know thinking and i waited i waited for weeks and weeks and weeks waiting for this life-size monster to show then all of a sudden this little little folder like this shows up I'm, yeah. what the hell is this yeah and i open it up it's made out of garbage bag material it's a plastic and it's it's in half too. You had to tape it together yep. of a printed Frankenstein monster. I'm all, whoa, whoa. Um, and it, and it wasn't. How tall was it? It, it wasn't. No, no, no. It was it was six feet from from the the, the bottom of the the vinyl to the top. See? And then it came with two little glow in the dark things that you could stick in its eyes. Yes. And talk about harsh reality. Yes. That moment when you go. Oh, I guess everything you send away for doesn't really <laughs> oh, no, Yeah, that's I'm so sad. Isn't that sad? <laughs> that's really Somebody says sad. sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. <laughs> well, monkeys but you see, for, for, for viewers, see, that taught me, oh, well, I'm not going to pay for those sea monkeys. I'm not going to pay for this or I'll pay for that. Forget it. But what was great about my love of monsters, mm -hmm. my birthday is in October. And what happens in October, that's when all the Halloween stuff comes out. Right. And for me, it was like, oh, oh my gosh, my, my birthday's at the perfect time. They're celebrating yeah. my birthday by putting yeah. all the pumpkins. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget, in 1973, there was a Ben Franklin. Yeah. Their little, they had a, a uh, Ben Cooper. I'm sure we all know the name of Ben Cooper that made costumes. Right. But they also made what's called rubber jigglers. Yes. And I noticed that you had your creature here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to bring and show, show and tell one of my little. Show. I love, I love Larry's show and tell. Show. This, this. I had one. 
Oh, you had one? Had oh, you one. don't have one now? No. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, Ted. You know what? My thing oh, is, I didn't... Well, was I this didn't... Your, and, you, and so so you don't have one in such great shape as this mine, is, are you? You guys have to listen oh. to the Monster Party podcast, oh, yeah. because this is what Larry does go, Oh, you had one, so you did. What did you do with it? Burn it? Burn, burn it up? <laughs> well, I put mine lovingly on a shelf. Yes, well, see, so here's the thing. Do I get to touch it? Well, you can, you can, yeah, you can just touch him. He's like, he's like rubbery. But you see, the, look at the paint on him. The paint and that, that's is from Ben perfectly. Franklin, right? It, ben Franklin and, and Ben Cooper made these little rubber figures. It was the smell of these things. And smell because, it. Smell it. Yeah, no. It's, smell it. It still yeah, has. It still smell, has. It still smell. has that rubbery smell. That rubbery, sort of musty, odd, you know, sort yeah. of like. Yeah. And it would be like. You know, like thirty or forty of them in there. You could just put your hands. Yeah, you put your hands in, and your whole hands would. And the funny thing is, if if they left all the figures in there, the oil, no, (laughs) the oil in there would seep through. Oh yeah. But the funny thing is, if you listen to the podcast, you'll understand. uh, My co-host and I, we didn't play with toys the same way. Sean liked to burn his up, light them on fire. Matt would take him out of the package and play with him, and James would do the same thing. I was a strange kid. Yeah. I loved my toys. So when I took it out, I'm all, oh, oh, let me put it on the shelf and look at it, and I'll have a little set. I remember my folks kind of giving me a little bit of guff because we were always saving up for, I was a Star Wars kid. Yeah. And little Star Wars figures. Yeah. And I loved putting them on my shelf. Mm-hmm. I mean, I played with them as well, but I, yeah. I loved setting them all up on the shelf. Yes. And my parents would buy me the cases yes. for them to put them in the case yes. and put them in your shell in your mm-hmm. in your closet. Mm-hmm. That's where they stay. No, no, no. I was taking the books off and I was yep. putting my figures up. And it's like, why don't you play with those? Why don't you, I I do play with those. I bring them down and then I put them back up in the exact same place. Okay, let me ask you something. Yeah. So you were a Star Wars kid. Oh yeah. You did you send away for the display? Remember the first series, the first oh, yeah, twelve? Yeah. Did you send no. away for the display? Absolutely. The, the little and great. And who doesn't have it anymore? You don't have it? In- oh. Those, I, 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 the, oh. The, uh, the, booth, the booth next door. Right? Oh, okay, okay. The, the booth, uh, this is No, this is I still booth. have mine. It's in but perfect shape. those are my shape. original 12-inch yeah. ones. But that's what I, I sadly... You have the 12-inch ones? Right here. You can see them. Yeah. The, those okay. are my original. Yeah. Do you have the boxes for those? <laughs> <laughs> see, this is... No, no. They're asking no. For, for close-ups, and we can't move it, but what I can do is cut to here. this, this Kathy, camera. Here, here. Once you... It's you... basically lined up with... The uh, angry fish guy. Here, let me. So I'm gonna go to that guest camera right now. There you go. Uh, you can raise them up a little bit and back just a touch. You're you're pretty good there. So there's the creature. Um, you, okay, I'm gonna make him giggle. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Well, you're. I'll I will you, do two figures. I'll tell you what. Uh, before, you know what? We're gonna to take pictures of this stuff yeah. and then I'll put it on the Instagram. Yeah. Okay. But before I, I wanted to go to the creature, but before that, I want to compliment you on your large action figures. Um, I have those too, but I noticed is you're missing a couple. I'm missing. Do I don't you have, have Princess Leia. I don't have oh. IG-88. Oh. Look at. Do you have the boxes for those too? I'm about ready to get some crap from no, Larry. No, 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 no. Again, you know, Christmas yeah. time came out. You know, my Princess Leia is in perfect shape. Her buns are perfect. They've never been fondled hey, or hey, touched. Hey, this is G-rated. Oh, but you know, you know what I mean. Princess Leia has oh, the, the bun. The, yeah, the, you the know, cinnamon rolls. Yeah, the cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. buns. Yeah, okay. exactly. But uh, my uh, mine have their boxes, and uh, they I have the whole yeah. set. And no, and I did. I, I sadly we were talking about this yesterday with the Star Wars toys and things like that. When I was a single dad and my daughter was very little, and I had all my Star Wars action figures and all that, and it was like Star Wars action figures, my original ones. Yes. Or pay the mortgage and buy diapers. I, and it was a lean time in the industry, no. and I just I was like, you know, this is twenty years ago, and I, I was understand. Like, uh, something's got to give, and I, I very like push that across the countertop. And but you see, the good thing is yeah. you you made the right decision. Sure. You know, I've had I've had moments in my life where I've had to do something similar. Um, sure. But what's as a collector though? Yeah. We never lose that that desire to yeah. get that missing piece. Sure, sure. Tell now, me about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my wife no. over there. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I just brought up one of my favorite. Something uh, just came from eBay. <laughs> Did you get something? <laughs> oh, no, it was my well. Um, this uh, little Ben Cooper rubber creature. I'm a huge creature fan. Yeah. Again, it was one of the first films I showed Kathy. I noticed you have the beautiful Fishman here, which I thought was going to be a costume. No, and I, I, but you know, I'm telling you, piece. Ted, it would make a nice costume. No, you and I, make a, like, I, a one. you're not the first person to say that. But though. since you like creature, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd show you a Ben Cooper Ooh. creature costume. And this, this was the thing when I was a kid. You're a kid. Uh, how old are you, Larry? I'm uh, 55. Okay, I'm I'm 50, almost 53. So we're very close here. Mm. 
this was the coolest thing. I mean, they, this is what you found on the shelves. Yeah. Lined up for yeah. what miles and yeah. feet high like that. And this was the thing that Halloween time would roll around. You yes. waited for October one because they didn't start decorating they, for Halloween in October. Exactly. Like now. Not like now. But it would October rolled around and yeah. these went on the shelves. And you just got to go down the shelf, and it was Batman and Superman and the yes. creature and Frankenstein, and yeah. it's like I had a Casper. Yeah, I, yeah. And yeah. It, you, God knows where it is now, but you know, it's but, just and we wore it and wore it, wore it, and it cracked and split, and the rubber band is gone. And and that, and these costumes, these costumes that you bought in the in the '60s or in the '70s, these were never meant to last forever, no. and they were they're like a one-time costume. And if you were lucky, you could find the one that you wanted. You know, I want to be Superman. I want to be... I remember one Halloween, my mom took me to the store, and it was like a last-minute thing, and I, I wanted to get something really cool. I wanted to get a monster. We get to the store, and what's there? Lance Link, Secret Chimp. <laughs> and my uh, Mickey Mouse from The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now, I loved... Uh, now, is this your original? Uh, this is not my original. Okay. My original, but I have the picture stuff. This is not my original. It was torn apart, but I'll I was find able to a find this. I, I don't think I had that one with you the had a different, yeah. I had another Mickey one, yeah. but I, I've got pictures of me wearing it as a kid. Yeah. And, and we didn't use this. For some reason, yes. I have a, like a clown costume on. Well, with if, the Mickey Mouse, it's, if, it's scary as hell. Well, the the funny thing is, for uh, actually, let me show you the creature because yeah. I, I wanted to show you the creature. One of the things we wanted as a kid, when you dressed up as Halloween, you wanted to look like the monster, you right. know. But what Ben Cooper and Collegeville and many others did is they said, you know, we'll make the mask to look like the monster, but then when you go trick or treat, no one's going to know what you are. So right. what we'll do is we'll put the name on it. Hi, I'm Creature, you yeah. know, so so just I, I never understood idea. that. Well, and it's it's like, it, it as Matt would say, it's as if they painted what would be on the Creature's van on his... <laughs> so here's the mask, and look at this. It's like, hey, Creature! And, and this is the thing I don't understand. So you're wearing the mask. Yeah. But then you put the image right below <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, listen, I love this. This is so much fun. Yeah. But... What's the? I mean, why wouldn't you just print it? You're gonna print on it. Print some scale. Yeah, well, print, it's like, and what I didn't, I didn't bring the other creature costume that I have, which came out in the '90s, and I did a Halloween okay. show with with Dan Roebuck and Sam Fong, and we talked about this. And Dan explained that you can tell in the '90s there were people who wore costumes in the '60s, and they wanted to make costumes more like what the monster would look right. like. And so the creature does have scales. The Wolfman okay. costume does have like fur. like fake fur yeah. or whatever. And they this because this is from like the '70s. But I mean, I mean to find these costumes in really good shape, it's it's really it's it, it yeah. is hard. And I'm still and if they're in good shape, you're gonna. Pay, yeah, exactly. Pay, yeah. And what I've done in the past is sometimes, whether it's on eBay, you can find, oh, here's a mask of a costume I want. I'll get that. Somewhere down the road, you may find the costume or a box, and you right. can kind of piece it together. Piece it together. But, when did they stop making these? Well, actually, if you can go to Target, they do have... They're kind of coming they're, back. They're, they're, yeah, they're not really in a box. It's, it makes it easy for them to be put on a hanger. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, my niece, uh, Everly knows that Uncle Larry likes the creature. And she saw a creature costume last year. What did she do? She wanted to be the creature for Halloween. And so my aunt sent us a video of her being like, I'm the creature. I'm the creature. <laughs> Uncle Larry, yeah! <laughs> Teaching those kids. But these were cheap ideas for Halloween. In Famous Monsters Magazine, they had these masks. What uh, were called the 800 line by Don Post. These were like eight bucks. That was still too much for me it's back in money. the 70s. Yeah, yeah. But I was able to get uh, from from actually Dan, who had an amazing collection. This is a foam-filled uh, mask of Frankenstein. And then here is the Wolfman. Now, are these reproduction? Now, or? very good question. This is an original that's okay. been repaired and cleaned up. So it's okay. because... The rubber that they used back in the 70s, it, you know, it deteriorates. It just doesn't last. In fact, when uh, I went to see Dan's collection one time, he goes, oh, do you smell that in the air? And I go, what is that? He goes, that's my collection, deteriorating. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what happens with a lot of these older masks. So sometimes the only way to uh, re keep them in good shape is right. to do the foam fill thing, right. which and he, you're Mr. Foam. You know yeah. everything about foam. Now, the thing about the Wolfman, this is really a, a rare mask to find. 
Dan was able to make a casting of it. Oh, wow. The original. And this was made from that casting. So this is relatively new. Yeah, and the great casting. thing about it is if you feel the, the rubber that's used, yeah. it's more thick. So, yeah. So this one hopefully is going to last longer. But I'll never forget, Ted, the first time I saw The Creature from the Black Lagoon. It was actually at the public library. I was about nine years old. I'd seen Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, The Mummy. I hadn't seen The Creature. I wanted to see. I'd just seen pictures. And the public library had a screening. But what they were screening was the Castle Films Reader's Digest version, which is about, mm -hmm. what, 12 minutes long? Yeah, yeah. I remember going into the room, and up at the front, they had this mask with red yarn coming out of it. And it just, oh, oh it's like blood. Oh, it's a, And that set up there why they showed the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's crazy. And it's funny because when you watch the that Castle Films version, it starts, they go, the whole opening with, and then the earth was created. The next thing is, the reed is in the Amazon. I mean, it starts right there. Right, Forget right. about finding the claw or right. whatnot. So, so when I saw the film for the first time with the whole thing, I'm all, whoa, wh where did this right. come from? So, no, here's the other thing. I mean, I, I clearly, I mean, it's, it's you're about monsters, you're about collecting, you know, all of this great stuff from your childhood and everything mm -hmm. like that. And it, you just always had this love for it. So, where did you grow up and what brought you to LA? Oh, okay. That's a really good question. You know, and it actually it actually coincides with another guest of yours. Okay. And the, it's a, kind of a strange story. Uh, like you, when I Star Wars came out, oh my gosh, the world of special effects. It just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. but as far as monsters goes, I was into monsters. I tried to get as much monster stuff as I could. I grew up in Northern California in, in San Jose. Okay. Just your local Ben Franklin or Jemco or stores of that nature, you know, they had stuff come out at, at uh, Halloween time, and that's right. when you could try to pick up stuff. Right. And then I had my famous monsters, and every once in a while I was able to pick up an item here or there. But the love of monsters, I kept my entire life. Uh, my collection started to grow and grow, and as soon as my older brothers went to college, well, I kind of took over the room, and then my <laughs> shells were huge, sure. and then I had that huge Star Wars collection, and right. a Star Trek collection, the monster collection, robots, space toys, and again, I took such good care of my toys that they were in really great shape, and I was weird in the sense that I kept the boxes. Right. In fact, my, my mom, Grandma Jane, Grandma Jane had a doll collection of uh, Madame Alexander dolls. And because I was such a stickler about keeping the boxes, she would go, oh, I guess I gotta keep the box so I can be like Larry. So she kept <laughs> all of her boxes for all her dolls. That's okay. Yeah. It's, but it's not that there's not a bunch of boxes up here. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, but what happened was, um, not only did I, I love monsters, but I wanted to tell stories about monsters. I made these Super 8 films about monsters and I wanted to get into film. Mm -hmm. uh, what I did is I applied and got into San Francisco State. I got my... Uh, bachelor's degree in film production uh, from there and then right out of San Francisco State I got this job at Midland Productions a special effects studio in Northern California in the Point Richmond area okay and I started out uh, doing rotoscoping animation right. and then they learned that oh he can build models oh he can do this he can do that so they kept me around and because I, I to go to through school I worked as a waiter and an assistant manager I had right. this managerial background so then they had me work with the producer and then I became an associate producer, an assistant producer, and then I started to produce some of the simulator films that they did. These are for ride film companies. Uh, nowadays, stuff like that is done with computer graphics. Digital, yeah. But back when I was doing it, back in 1989 through the 90s, it was all models and miniatures and motion control, right. like the ways they did Star Wars. What was cool right. about Midland is we considered ourselves to be the poor man's ILM. In fact, we got some people who used to work at ILM to work on our films. Right. And one of the projects I worked on, uh, I was actually able to produce and direct, was a commercial for Tower Records. It was the most expensive commercial they ever did. And Bruce Mitchell okay. worked on that. With All me. right. Yeah. Incredibly talented artist. No, Bruce is fantastic. No. And it, it's funny that people ask, so Tower Records, what's the, you know, well, yeah. Tower Records. What's Tower Records? They, they, <laughs> look. It's gone. Look, Google it. Okay. <laughs> Tower Records was huge back in the 70s and the 80s. And what we were doing is we presented an idea about take a ride to Tower Records. And when we presented it, they thought, whoa, that's way too expensive. I, we don't want to make that. But the six months later, they said, God, everyone was just talking about that commercial idea. They brought us back. We presented it again. Same amount of money. They decided to do it. And the whole idea is you're on a uh, roller coaster track. You get shot up and into the Tower Records bag. 
You go to YouTube, put in Tower Records, take a ride, you'll see it. 30 seconds, but it was their most expensive commercial at the time. So, cool. But Bruce Bruce worked on that with me. He worked on a bunch of and other things. And that was things. up north? That was... that was up north. Okay. So what got me to L.A.? What happened was Midland decided, it was at a crossroads. We had Bruce seen... Is, is he really? Hey, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> hey, I just talked about you. What happened was in 1993, a film came out which kind of revolutionized everything. And that was a film called Jurassic Park. Yep. What happened in Jurassic Park, I remember sitting in the theater and there was the digital dinosaur. When the dinosaur came onto the screen, I was there on the opening night, packed house, people started applauding. My boss who was sitting next to me goes, oh my gosh, we're in trouble. Because now we're gonna get away from models and miniatures motion control. And the owner of the company said, that's it. We're going to be a computer game company, mm. knowing nothing about computer graphics whatsoever. And I said, I don't know if I want to be a manager of a bunch of guys working on computers. Right. So a friend of mine convinced me, hey, why don't you apply to AFI? It's in LA. It's a... So I applied to the producing program. I got into AFI. And from there, uh, I met a, a lot of great people, uh, got my master's degree. And then from there, I started to work uh uh, and television for I worked at a place for about 17 years, mm -hmm. and that was that was great. And uh, so so I'm here. And then of course I met my buddies and we. And yeah. So party. how did how did Monster Party podcast? How did that start with you four guys? Uh, did you know each other from any kind of childhood well, or, or? Yeah. Did you? Just... Therein lies a tale. Yeah. <laughs> how and much time have we got? Just oh, 15, 15 okay. minutes. You got oh, 15 minutes. Okay. Well, well <laughs> that's it, a good it, chunk of time. Yeah, but I want to get to Kathy's other things just really. Well, quickly. yeah. What do we got? In a nutshell. In a, in a nutshell. Yeah. What happened was the first person I met was Sean and okay. and. My college roommate in San Francisco said, hey, Larry, I live next door to a guy who loves monsters just like you. You should meet him. So I, I go on over and I meet Sean and we strike up a friendship right away. Then I start working at a, a TV studio and meet another guy that was James. Okay. And, and we hit it off right away because he loved Godzilla like I did. Right. Okay. Matt kind of came to the picture later because Sean was putting together a TV show. We did a pilot for a TV show about science fiction, fantasy, horror, game show. It was a great concept. But Matt was this other guy who, who like me, we we're both competing for who has the most knowledge. Right. I do have to say that he did win, but there was a flaw in the system. <laughs> and I, to this day, I still, you know, it's like if they would have played it the right way, I still think I would have won. Whatever. <laughs> but the funny thing is, Sean would have these parties, and Matt would come over, James would come over, and I would come over. And we would get into these huge arguments about something so insane, like... IG-88, that's a terrible character. No, it's a great character. Right. You know, which is stronger, wolf man or creature? Creature is stronger. No, no. So we got in these huge arguments. And people said, you guys are really entertaining. You guys should consider doing something. We first tried to do a, because we all are visual, we tried to do something for you two. Okay. The problem is, when we talk about a creature mask or a Frankenstein mask, we want to be able to show it. Took a long time to edit. And Matt suggested, why don't we try the podcast? And we, he created a great environment, a great little studio yeah. at his place, surrounded by his entire collection. We invite people over for dinner and cocktails because it's a party. Mm -hmm. It's not called Monster Interview. No. It's <laughs> when you came over, you had fun, didn't you? I had a lot of you, fun. Yeah. I you, brought toys. I brought yeah, show and you tell. Brought toys. And... No, he, he's, la he's laughing over there. No, we're, we're not. So tell us when you thought about. Oh, no, no. It no, is, no. We, it is a party. We all sat and drank whiskey and looked at action figures. But, and... but at the same time, people ask, so. He knows who I am. Okay. No, no, no. But the, the funny thing is, people go. So, what, like the podcast I don't like is when it's like, okay, we're gonna talk about monsters, but first, hey, let me tell you about I got my car fixed. Oh, did you really? You got your car fixed? Oh, like, what the hell is this? No. It's like it's monster Larry party. Is on we point. say who we are, say who our topic is, our guest, and then we go to town. Right. That's the way it works. No, and it, it, that being on the show the one time, it was just like after listening to the podcast for so long and then watching you guys do your thing I was just kind of giddy it's like this is fun this is fun you guys and the banter and everything because you wouldn't expect necessarily you all love monsters and you all like film yes and you're all coming from somewhere a little bit different you know your each personality is maybe a little bit this or that or yeah. whatever like that and you guys bounce off each other but what it does is remind me of my good friend like George and Pete and Dan and myself, we would all get together when we were 14, 15, 16 years yes. old. And 
It's like, you know, this movie is cool. Oh, I thought that sucked. Or yeah. this is cool. And I thought that sucked. Or and I love this. Or not. Nah. I like think, that, and it's it's that it's that fun banter, but you know, doing the same thing we we're doing as kids, but as adults, and it's it's so fun and entertaining to watch thing, you guys. The, listen the, to you guys. the thing that has been really rewarding, at least uh, to all four of us, is we're actually surprised. When we started this, we were excited. Hey, we we got a hundred people. Well, now we're up to people up to seven thousand downloads right. per episode, and when we're able to see where everybody is, we have people in. Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we had somebody in Hong Kong. I mean, it's all over the world. It's global, which is really exciting. Right. But the other thing is, we've actually gotten emails from people telling us stories about either something wasn't going well in their life, and listening to Monster Party just gave them an hour right. or so where they could feel uplifted or whatever. Right. I remember talking about this. Oh, I remember that toy. Oh, I agree with that film. Oh, I don't agree. And it's like this great engagement thing that you have. And it's been really touching and some of the things have, that people have. You guys said. have kept going through COVID. I mean, you're doing it remotely yeah, with the, each other. The challenging thing that we've had is it, we really love getting together as a group, having dinner, having cocktails, and of yeah. course we can't do that, we want to be safe. Sure. And the one thing that has opened up to us is we've been able to get some people who would find it difficult to come over to the studio at a particular time. Now it's like, I can do it from my home. Like sure. Clint Howard, Clint Howard is a really busy actor, and he's mm -hmm. actually busy now, mm -hmm. but it made it easier for him to actually do the show remotely from his house. And look, our audio, or we have really great audio, and it sounds great. It, it's just, you know, you're not it's watching really, a video. It's, it's a well produced so, show. Um, I, mean, I, I do, ho I look forward to the time when we can get back into the studio. My favorite part of the show are the last 20 minutes after you guys wrap, and we get to hear all the bloopers and outtakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. Sometimes I'm really, you know, thrilled about that. But No, I know, think <laughs> it's, it's a fun insight, and it, it just kind of shows who you guys are. Yeah. Um, you know, listening to the show, you get to know you guys. But the, the show itself is very clean, very well produced. And then that last 15, 20 minutes, it's like, that's a lot of fun. Because for me, I'm a behind the scenes person. Mm, yeah. You know, that's like the DVD extra. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the people that really like that stuff, mm -hmm. we like the extras. Mm -hmm. And so listening to the extras, mm -hmm. And I know production stuff like that. I was like, that's funny. I mean, how many times you got flipped? Well, Alona, my wife helped me uh, um, shoot my little trailer for uh, the the mini Son of Monster Palooza. Yeah. So we went over to the convention center yeah. and shot that first part. Yeah. It was right down the street here. And then we came back and we did my my gag where I had the monsters and I was in there and we were in our den in our house. I, how many times did we shoot that? Oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to the point where I was crouched down hiding behind sure. the monsters and would stand up. And my thighs were killing me. It's like I had done. I, I you maybe, walk for like it, three days. it was like eighty <laughs> takes. We had done eighty takes. Wow! And I was up and down and up wow. and down. Well, that's the thing too. I didn't write a script. I thought, yeah. I know what I'm gonna yeah. say. I know what I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna pop up and I'm gonna be. Like, oh, and I flubbed a line. Yeah, oh, and be, I flubbed. being prepared. Yeah, being terrible. prepared. Be prepared. That's, that's Next yeah, time, so. write a script. No, and it's and it's it's great. I. Uh, when we do our show, though, we have a basic overview or we do our research beforehand. It's not like we just show up and go off the cuff. We have our information. Oh, yeah. All the topics we have, it's a Larry right came with a clipboard today. I did. I, I did. Uh, you know, one of the things that the guys poke fun at me about, though, is I have what I call as a, a, a collection of creepy dolls. When my mom, mom got the Madame Alexander set of the Adams family, she would tell the, the grandkids, oh, those are Uncle Larry's creepy dolls. And so I have those creepy dolls. And what I love is, is I pass my love of creepy dolls onto my daughter. So not only does she have Reagan, what else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have another one. Yeah, I brought my, one of my other favorite living dead dolls. This is Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> Exorcist. She's now, is this from the same collection? Yeah. These okay. are both uh, Living Dead Dolls. Okay. And um, I have a bunch of them on my shelf. Do you have the boxes for those? I do, actually. Okay, just check it. Just check it. someone makes me keep them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now wait a minute. Be, be honest with me. If it wasn't for your dad, would you throw the boxes out or not? Honestly, I think he's influenced me so much that I think okay. I just keep them. All right. Because. That's fine. I don't want. That's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I always I, there's times I've, I've had Mackenzie has bought or I bought something for her it's like don't you want to keep the box no <laughs> you know because I'm more like that now yeah. where it's like do you want to keep the box for that it's like no it's like mm, crunch <laughs> I do now though do you he's now he's bullied me into it oh, okay. he's bullied <laughs> you into it what I love about Kathy's collection too is it's displayed really well and not too long ago, was it for Christmas that we got you a set of Shining dolls? Yeah, um, he got me the, the two, twins, the, the, yeah, the two twins. And if you press 
uh, a button on one of them, she goes like, "Come play with us." <laughs> <laughs> now, how many of those type of figures do you have from that collection? Uh, oh my gosh, I have maybe twelve. Okay, maybe. that's a good start. Yeah. Um, when did you start with them? Like, uh, how long have you been collecting those? I don't know. Maybe you. Few Just a few them. years, and okay. because they're they're not cheap, you know. Sure. I've, I've been getting them for like holidays and like birthdays and stuff. Yeah. The other thing too is I, you know, we did we had our some people go oh so you forced your daughter to watch monsters no no we did she did princess I stuff. wanted to we yes I know but you know you you had princess stuff and things like that but then you expanded one of your first toys though and it was waiting for her in her hospital bed when you were delivered and they taught they cleaned you up and tossed you in that little bed what was waiting there for you a little stuffed animal creature or do you not, remember it i do i saw rolled it. over and you saw it <laughs> <laughs> i should have brought it it's okay it's That's it's right. funny my i kind of freaked my my parents out when i took all these photos with kathy in the bed and i have here's a rubber godzilla head here's a creature head <laughs> and i had all these monsters I mean, and there's the baby kathy's in the baby sitting in the crib with all these things see we, we raised our oh. daughters right i remember coming home one day and i was so proud and i think my daughter was about 12 13 somewhere about there right right around that age mm -hmm. And I came home from work. She was already home from school. And uh, she's sitting on the sofa playing a video game. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big action adventure you know, fan, all that kind of stuff. So she's playing Lego Indiana Jones mm -hmm. on PlayStation, wearing my Indiana Jones fedora, <gasps> pulled down on her head like that. And I just, I walk in, she didn't even see or notice I was home. And I look like that, and I take my camera and just like click, and it's like, I raised my kid right. <laughs> oh. Is it, and isn't it great when your kids are watching movies that you either told them about or, yeah. or and and I love it when we do that with Kathy too because we do have these moments where I go okay we have we watched this have we seen this we've gone through all the classics and now we're expanding the horizon but now the thing that makes me nervous is there's a film that Matt will say oh Larry show her this and I'm like uh, I don't know and and what do you say to me. I, I, I said, oh, I don't know if I want to show you this. You go. No, I, I can watch it. I've seen The Exorcist. That's her, that's her, her <laughs> standard thing dead. now is, I, I've seen The Exorcist, so I can see anything. You know, just recently on, on the latest show that we did uh, called Halloween Essentials, we had uh, David Scal uh, J. Mm -hmm. Scallon, who did this great book, Fright Favorites. Yeah, that came in the mail just like two days later. Oh, okay. After he heard that, he was like, I heard Monster oh. Party guys talk about this. Did you get it autographed? Is it autographed? <sighs> oh, oh, you don't have yeah, it autographed. Yes, it is. I, I had to loan a sign it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have you sign it. No, That's no, what no. I'm no. Do. But see, the great thing about something like this is here you have David who knows all this stuff about, he's done tons of commentaries for tons of Blu-rays, but he worked with Turner Classic Movies to put together like a basic overview of if, if you're not really sure, what's this whole monster thing all about you know he gives you a list of well you should check out this film and this film and of course it it's like well is it 30 films he does say the film if you like this you should check out that so it's right. more like a list of 60 films right but we had David on and it was great because I mean he's he, he's such a uh, he, he knows so much about film history and right. monster history no and I paged through it really quick so I, I was yeah. listening to the podcast yeah yeah and I was like I okay and I got on Amazon and I started checking out you know what with the book and it, I mean he's got so many books mm -hmm. but like, well and I, I want to say to you thank you for doing this by the oh, way oh you're welcome when Kathy and I Kathy and I were planning oh we're going to Monster Palooza and, and we were so disappointed and sure. you know it, I understand I understand yeah. it's especially at the Burbank place it's probably probably not the best place for a lot of people to get together right. you know and this has been so fun but I really do hope that we're able to do Monster Palooza in, in May. Yeah. Uh, because Monster, what happens Team is person, yeah. for for Monster Party, we do the Pasadena show. That's yeah, the yeah, larger the show. show yeah. uh, when they do Son of Monster Palooza, because it's small, it's more intimate. We like to walk the floor right. and meet people. In the Pasadena, we actually have a booth, right. and so we've told listeners and certain guests come by the booth because we record pretty much the whole time right. we can edit it down to two shows right. but it's like it's great we actually had tom savini come and talk yeah. to us for about five minutes which was such a thrill because he's a busy guy and those are great shows yeah. to listen to the yeah. podcast because you've got everybody walking by people that you probably would not normally get for the show we, we had academy award win uh, winners come we and just fans of the show who right. come by uh, who who talk about oh oh I love that creature show or I love the the show you talked about uh, uh, taglines 
we did a whole show on horror taglines, right? And which was so fun. What we do is we'd spout, and many films had more than one tagline. And this would be something that would either be in the movie preview, or be on the poster, or be in the press book, right? And and so it was so fun to you know say a, a, a tagline to someone and see if you could try to guess right. what it was. No, it's fantastic. But uh, you know, for Monster Party, we have a, a slew of topics. It's always different, and it's a little different. They're fun. really diverse, really obscure, and it's just it's there's. They're so fun to listen to. Listen to their podcast, please. But it's it's a pleasure having you here. Well, Ted, thank you, know, you for having us. to know us. you a little bit more. And Kathy, it's a pleasure to have you here. I'm yes, so glad we got a, a monster, us. true monster kid here. Well, another one. My daughter's right over here. <laughs> so she's kind of a monster kid, too. And it, Oh, okay, the original monster kid, son of Pumpkinhead, <laughs> right back here. But if you want to check David us out, yeah, uh, go, you know, you can Google Monster Party Podcast. We're on uh, Libsyn. We're, uh, we're on Stitcher. Yeah. We're uh, the, the, no, uh, Kathy Apple been on the Podcast. podcast. Actually, she has. Okay. We're, we're, she's been on the podcast a couple of times. We want to do a, what are the kids seeing these days? You know, we were planning to have her and a few other young kids. She likes kids. horror films. You want to be hey. on a kid podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we got to hook you guys up. There you go. But uh, you can also, we're on Twitter and Instagram at right. Monster Party HQ. Right. And we also, if you like the shirt, Monster Party uh, store on eBay. And the hats with about a billion stitches, right? It, not a billion, but it's a high quality cat. <laughs> it is. I wear mine often. Yeah, it doesn't good. look as good as that anymore. <laughs> I wear it so often. Ted, thanks for having us. Thanks so much for being here. Guys, we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back with uh, Jasper Anderson. So thanks for being here, and we'll be back.